Hey everyone, we're going to look at photosynthesis today. We've already done respiration. There's a video posted on that linked um, through Canvas, or you can go and find one yourself if you want to find one on respiration. But photosynthesis, this is the other half of the equation. So if you remember autotrophs, uh, they take light energy and they use it to excite electrons, which will help them produce sugars that they can then use for respiration. So it's a circular process, right? So photosynthesis for autotrophs feeds their, respir their respiration. Um, respiration produces the, the necessary components for photosynthesis. So uh, photosynthesis, plants, they take carbon dioxide, so 6CO2 plus 6H2O. So carbon dioxide in water gives them glucose, C6H12O6 and um, six oxygen off. Uh, the component that we care about for as humans is this half, right? We need sugars and oxygen in order to carry out our cellular respiration. We get that from autotrophs. Um, so this is a diagram of a chloroplast. You can see that it's got internal membranes, very similar to the mitochondria. Um, but it's got a, a bilayer on the outside. Don't worry about the, the plastoglobule. We're not going to be getting into any of those, but we really need to function or we need to focus um, on the thylakoid, this guy. So we've got these little stacks of thylakoid inside our chloroplast. Let me switch to blue so we can see it. Inside of our chloroplast, and this is where photosynthesis is actually occurring. So these are membrane-bound sacs inside of our chloroplast that hold the chlorophyll, and they're connected by um, a network, a membrane network, but the main idea is that these things are covered with, or they're, they have proteins inside their membrane that accept light energy. They, they gather light energy and use it to excite electrons. Um, also notice that the chloroplast is self-containing ribosomes and its own chloroplast DNA, very similar to the mitochondria, which hints at some evolutionary um, symbiosis between um, chloroplasts. If they were their own organism at one point, we're not totally sure, but there is evidence that this thing may have been self-sustaining at one point. Um, so we've got uh, the thylakoid. This is where we're going to be focusing. Before we get into that, let's look at light energy for a moment. If you remember light, let's get that down there and make it a little bit bigger. Light is energy, right? It has different wavelengths. Um, this is called the electromagnetic spectrum. So... This is the electromagnetic spectrum. So light energy comes in a variety. So if you have very high energy waves, we're talking gamma rays, this is like radiation, that's bad. It destroys DNA. On the other end, this is radio waves, right? So these are passing through you all the time, you don't notice them. Right in the middle is the visible spectrum. This is what we can see. Infrared is just a little bit lower energy than visible. So if we're talking about energy levels, this is low energy and this is high energy. Plants, also function from the visible spectrum. So they are absorbing light in the 600 to 700 nanometer range. And that happens to be kind of in this right about down here. So 600 to 700 nanometers. This is where plants typically absorb. They also do absorb some violet in the in blues. And we can look at absorption, absorption spectra. Um, but this also helps us answer why plants are green. If we see it, it is being reflected. So lights, this green wavelength, isn't really used by plants at all, which is pretty interesting. Uh, the chlorophyll has been developed in such a way, or it's evolved in such a way that uh, it's very efficient using ends of the spectrum. So let's take a look at photosynthesis now. All right, so here we have a thylakoid, one of those individual sacs inside the chlorophyll. Inside the chlorophyll, that intermembrane space is called the stroma. So this is the thylakoid. Okay, uh, so that's the membrane of the thylakoid. The stroma is the outside stuff. So this would be like the matrix in the intermembrane space in a mitochondria. Um, and this is a light-dependent reaction, meaning I have to have light energy in order for this reaction to occur. So we've got our phospholipid bilayer here. This is the lumen of the thylakoid, so the internal space. And embedded in the membrane, we have some proteins, and these are channels. Now, these are very special groups. These are called photosystems. So that's what PS stands for, photosystem 2 and photosystem one. And these photosystems are groups of proteins and groups of chemicals that carry out a specific job. And so we're gonna look at the process here. I'm gonna kind of narrate through the process. So first thing that needs to happen 
uh, the whole idea about this is that we are trying to build this thing, NADPH. So NADPH is a high energy chemical that we are going to carry over into the second half of uh, photosynthesis. But to start with, here's our reactants, right? We have water in H2O molecule. When we mix it with some oxygen, we can break it. We break water out into oxygen and hydrogen. These hydrogens, notice, we are building up an internal concentration, a high concentration inside. So water is broken, we get an oxygen and some hydrogen. The hydrogens hang out here inside the lumen. We'll come to those in just a minute. The electrons that are released, the light enters photosystem two. So this light energy. And the chlorophyll here captures that energy and applies it to this electron and essentially it bumps its energy up. So this is very similar. It is an electron transport chain, just like in uh, respiration. So we are taking an electron, adding some energy to it, using light energy from the sun, and now we're going to pass this electron along through some transport pumps, right? So we're going to use the energy in this electron to pump more hydrogen into this thylakoid. So hydrogen is coming in here. We're building up a high, high concentration gradient because this electron is being used to run this protein pump. So electrons are, or this electron is passed down. As it's passed through, it loses energy. So it needs to be re-energized. And that's why we have photosystem one. So this is similar. It gathers a slightly different wavelength of light. This one is about 700 nanometers. That's NM. This photosystem two is about 680 nanometers. So similar, uh, but this electron is re-energized, so it comes flying out, and we pass it through one more intermediary, and its energy is used to reduce an NADP plus molecule into NADPH. So the energy from this electron reduces to NADPH. So now this thing has the energy. And this is very, very important. So that enzyme, the enzyme that does that is called NADP plus reduce reductase, right? So we're reducing. It's an enzyme that does the reduction. Just like with respiration, all of this hydrogen in here needs to go somewhere. So this is pr pushing it against the gradient. That hydrogen then floods through this channel protein. This is an ATP synthase, and we produce some ATP as a result, and hydrogen is pumped back out of the thylakoid to be recycled. So all of this is happening. The main idea is to produce this high-energy particle called NADPH, and as a side effect, we get some ATP as a result that's pumped through ATP synthase because of the electron transport chain. That's step one. That's a light dependent reaction. So let's move this out of the way. And I'm going to pull this guy to the front. Just one second. All right. So here's the bigger picture. So we've got our light dependent reactions. This is uh, here on the left is what we just looked at. Then the Calvin cycle. This is step two in producing the glucose because plants, they need glucose to use in respiration, right? Uh, step one gives them some ATP. This can be used for cellular processes, other things that are going on, but the main idea is it needs glucose to break down in the mitochondria. The Calvin cycle is what does that. So carbon dioxide comes in, and it is modified a little bit. It gets turned into this thing called 3PGA, so we take a single carbon molecule, and now this is a three carbon molecule. Some ATP is used, giving us some ADP. This is recycled back. NADPH is then oxidized. This is oxidized. Right? Its charge is going up. Here it's a zero charge, and then it goes to a plus one, so it's oxidized, and then this is also recycled. So NADPH carries the energy from the photosystems, from that chlorophyll, and it converts that 3PGA into a three G3P, which is then turned into a sugar. There's some other processing that happens here. You don't need to worry too much about the steps, um, but three G, G3P is another intermediate that's turned into a sugar, and it uses this energy. So this thing, this NADPH, is the energy. That's where that energy comes from to make that change. Finally, 3GP is changed, modified one more time into RUBP, and that's actually what happens up here. There's another uh, another enzyme structure called Rubisco, and we'll look at that um, a little bit more specifically when we do Calvin cycle detail, but some more ATP is used to make that change, and so this just cycles over and over and over again. Carbon dioxide comes in, we, we get a couple intermediates, we use some energy in there, and we produce some sugars as a result. Um, so plants, remember, they also respire, and that's the whole point of the Calvin cycle is to produce the glucose needed for respiration so the sugar goes off to the mitochondria. 
okay, and it's used in cellular respiration. The entire time, the light-dependent reactions are going on to give this high-energy NADPH molecule to use in the Kelvin cycle. That is what does the conversion of G3P into sugars. Um, the other thing to remember is that this happens in millionths of seconds. This happens extremely fast. So the electron transport chain, right, this, this process here is very, very quick, and the energy is fleeting. Um, NADPH can hang on to that energy for a little bit longer as the, it gets processed through the Calvin cycle, but sugars, glucose, those can be stored for a long, long time. And then we, as, auto, or as heterotrophs, we can take advantage of that. So that's photosynthesis, very similar to um, respiration. Make sure you know uh, how the electron transport chain is tied with the photosystems, why we need to pass those electrons around. Um, and then this overview of the Kelvin cycle that we just looked at. You should be aware of some of these intermediates, what happens, where energy comes in and comes out. And again, the main idea is that we are producing sugar that is then used in respiration by the mitochondria. If you have questions, you can leave them in the comments below.